friend. Otherwise, if the mind is just uncontrolled, doing whatever it likes, oh boy, then you're in trouble. How to control the mind? Not by force, because the mind has a very interesting uh, characteristic, which is that if you try to force it this way, then it'll push back the other way. Huh? Mind is like a three-year-old. Huh? Go to bed. No! <laughs> huh? The terrible twos. Ask any parent. There's a, te there's a range between like two and four years old where whatever you tell them to do, they say no. It's like they just discovered the word no. Right? And they're going to use it. You're going you're gonna to get all your karma for telling them no, you can't do this. No, you can't stick your food, you can't stick your hand in the stove, Johnny. What does Johnny do? <laughs> He's going to stick it right in there. So you can, you can bet that if you try to force the mind, you'll simply get the opposite result. Why? Because any energy that we put into a certain thought simply strengthens that thought. Mm -hmm. uh, like sex life. The more you try not to think of sex life, the more you're going to think of sex life. The more you try not to be angry, the more angry you're going to get. See? When you finally lose your temper, it's going to be a nuclear explosion. <laughs> so, the point is, because you're uh, attached or you're averse to a particular thought, it doesn't matter. Either way, you are linked with that thought. Either way, you're focused on that thought. Uh, the old saw is, try not to think of an elephant. Uh, <laughs> as soon as you try not to think of an elephant, of course you think of an elephant, right? So as soon as you try to avoid any particular type of thought, you're simply encouraging that same kind of thought. What's the solution? Think of Krishna. Think of Krishna, Krishna's name, Krishna's pastimes. You can ask the boys here, when they chant 64 rounds, there comes a point, with me it's usually at around 48 rounds, where the mind finally gives up. The mind says, okay, I guess you're just going to keep chanting that holy name. I just can't, I can't do anything about it, so I'm just going to go belly up. And it just rolls over. And goes, okay, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah, that takes a long time for me. How long? The last time I did only once, 100 rounds or something. Like 100 rounds, yeah, yeah. When I was chanting in Hawaii, it used to be like 48 rounds. Around 48 rounds, then the mind would finally say, okay, I guess he's just going to keep chanting today. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to stop him, so I might as well surrender. Join the party. <laughs> <laughs> Join the party. <laughs> so uh, the mind is very tricky. You can't control it directly. But guess what? If you can engage your senses in Krishna's service, you can eventually control the mind because you're generating more impressions of spiritual life than of material life. This is the trick. The mind runs by impressions. And specific, specifically, the quality of our consciousness is determined by the quality of the impressions that the senses are generating. What did we figure out? The, the ear is taking a sample uh, every, I don't know, 500 times a second or something like that. Huh? No, 500,000 times a second. To be able to hear a 20k tone, huh? your mind would have to have at least five samples per wave, no, per five samples per um, wavelength. Huh? So a 20k, 20 kilohertz tone, huh? there's 20,000 cycles per second, times five would be 100,000. Minimum mm -hmm. times two years is 200,000. 200,000 data points per second from the ears. And then there's the eyes, the mouth, the 
nose, the tongue, the kinesthetic sense of motion, the blood pressure and all the other senses, uh, indicators that we have, blood sugar and so on. Uh, these are all senses and they're all generating data. And there's this flood of data, you know, this flood of impressions coming into the mind. Now, of course, we can't deal with all of that directly. So what do we do? We form abstractions. And we deal with the abstractions. And that's where meaning comes in, and language, and ontology, and all that stuff. We discussed that all in our uh, seminar on Ayurveda, on uh, how consciousness works. I think it's like part three or something like that. Anyway, we discuss all that in detail. So, how do we change the quality of consciousness? We change the quality of those impressions streaming into the mind. We engage the senses in acts of transcendental quality. Huh? There's that wonderful shloka, how King Ambarish, King Ambarish uh, used or engaged every one of his senses in Krishna's service. Huh? It's a long, I don't know, it's actually like five or six shlokas. That King Ambarish engaged his feet in walking to the temple of Krishna. He engaged his body in bowing down before the deity. He engaged his eyes in seeing the form of Krishna. He engaged his mouth in tasting the remnants of the prasadam uh, from Krishna's temple. He engaged his ears in hearing Krishna's name. He engaged his nose in smelling the incense offered to Krishna. He engaged his sense of touch in touching the devotees. He engaged his sense of he engaged his energy in serving, uh, and so on and so on and so on. He engaged all of his senses in Krishna's service. The mind is very tricky. If you try to control the mind directly, it will simply rebel. So you overcome the mind, you trick the mind by engaging the senses, using the intelligence to follow the instructions of the scriptures. And the mind will think, well, that's a sensual activity, that's all right. And it won't rebel. But then it gets tricked because the sensual activity is actually transcendental. Ha! -ha. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the best one is hearing and chanting the holy name of Krishna because hearing, hearing is the deepest sense. Uh, if you're uh, sound asleep and somebody goes, hey, wake up! You'll wake up. Why? Because the sense of hearing is still active on some level. So, that means the sense of hearing, even though you can't see anything, you can't taste anything, touch anything, or whatever, the sense of hearing, even in deep sleep, is still operating on some level. So that means the sense of hearing is the deepest sense. So if you can engage the hearing sense, then you can engage all the other senses. Therefore, shravanam kirtanam vishnu smarana. Uh, by hearing and chanting the name of the Lord, then you always remember Him. Okay, and these are the primary three uh, means or methods of devotional service. Hearing, chanting, and remembering. In that order. So that's how you trick the mind. Mm -hmm. Next. Your devotional service is only awarded by Krishna. So even if someone has no material desires and only desires to serve the Lord, it's still possible that he doesn't have pure devotional service? Whose question? Santiago de Bruce. You've been living with a uh, guru for how long? And you think that pure devotional service is only awarded by Krishna? Hello? By the mercy of Guru and Krishna. Ah! Mercy. Sorry. <laughs> guru. Yes, Guru Krishna Prasadhe. Huh? There's a shloka like that. Pure devotional service is awarded by the mercy of Guru and Krishna. You have to please the Guru to pass Krishna's test. How many times have we been over this? Huh? 
You can't just walk into the temple and go up to the deity of Krishna and please him. You can try it. A lot of people have. Uh, a lot of people come to our site and they read a little bit and then they think, oh, this is great. I don't need a guru. I can just follow the instructions in these books and then I'll, I'll attain Krishna consciousness. Nope. They fall down every single time. Who is that guy, Josh? You remember him? Oh, yeah. He's the per perfect example. He came, oh yeah, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to bring all these people to your workshop and I'm going to do all this stuff. Guy never showed up at the workshop, never did anything. And then we, we wondered what happened to him. You know? And then months later, he writes back, oh man, my whole life fell apart. I lost my kids, my wife left me, I lost my job, I wound up in jail, now I'm in 